I'm Michelle Lee. And I'm Dave Jench. Next on your 6 o'clock news, shocking testimony from a Duluth man on trial for murder. You'll find out what he says led up to the July 4th killing. You'll meet a hometown hero tonight whose quick thinking and job required training saved a boy's life. And in tonight's I-Team 6 report, your children and television violence. The Channel 6, 6 o'clock news is straight ahead. Live from Channel 6, you're watching the number one news at 6 o'clock with Michelle Lee, Dave Jench, Tom Hansen, and meteorologist George Kessler. Now the Channel 6, 6 o'clock news. Good evening. A Duluth man on trial for murder gave surprising testimony in his own defense today, saying a threat against his sister prompted him to shoot his neighbor. 21-year-old Mickey Bo McKeever shot 29-year-old Sean Brady after a fight last July. Justin Acri was in the courtroom today when McKeever attempted to give an explanation for his actions. Justin. Dave Michelle McKeever told jurors that Brady hit him several times, giving him a bloody nose. He said that Brady apologized and urged him not to tell his father, Robert McKeever, about the fight. McKeever says Brady then pulled up a chair next to him, rubbed his arm and hair, saying he was sorry and would never hurt him. He testified that Brady then leaned in to kiss him on the lips. McKeever said he pulled away and that Brady said, quote, if you tell your dad, I'm going to do to your sister what I did to you. McKeever says that Brady threatened to sodomize McKeever's 16-year-old sister in front of her parents. McKeever said that's when he decided to go home and get his gun. He says when he returned, Brady apologized again and trying to give him a hug. McKeever says he pushed him away and pulled out the gun. He says Brady got in a defensive position and that's when he pulled the trigger. Now, on cross-examination, prosecutor David Johnson asked McKeever why he didn't give these details to police. McKeever said it hurts too much to talk about it. It's too embarrassing. It's humiliating. Now, Johnson said there's no reason for McKeever to go, have gone back to Brady's home. McKeever's story will be under further scrutiny tomorrow as cross-examination continues. Justin, what was the reaction in today's courtroom uh, about the testimony? Well, the victim's family had a tough time with it as McKeever explained how he, in fact, shot Brady uh, as Brady had tried to apologize for that fight. His mother rushed out of the courtroom. Very difficult for them. All right, Justin. Obviously, we'll continue to kind of follow this story tomorrow in testimony. Well, from a schoolyard shooting in Arkansas to a student threatening classmates at gunpoint in Moose Lake, a nationwide spree of youth violence has many people asking why. A just-released study says the growing amount of violence on television could be playing a significant role. Tonight, in a special I-Team 6 report, Barbara Riles takes an in-depth look at that concern. These preschoolers are developing their personalities. Experts say a person's temperament and behavior patterns are generally shaped before a child is four. Many of those same experts say television plays a significant role in that development. Our study shows that for children under seven, high-risk portrayals of violence that teach aggression are found most often in cartoons, the very programs that are targeted to this age group. After the problems in Arkansas and at other schools across the country, many are now questioning just how much television violence contributes to violence in real life. We're not saying that TV is a root cause of violence, but it contributes to it. Shows like the weekly CBS television drama Walker, Texas Ranger are very popular among young people. This seventh grader says it's his favorite show, though he realizes it does affect his behavior. A lot of times afterwards, I do feel rather cranky, <laughs> and um, I like the way he runs his truck off the roads and things like that. But The ABC weekly series NYPD Blue comes with a warning. The V-chip allows adults to electronically control what kids watch, but many say parents should teach their children the difference between reality and fiction, not simply block them from seeing things that might confuse them. I don't think you can blame a, a movie on the kids behavior I think it's the values that are instilled in them by their parents then. but with both parents working many families are finding less time to spend with their kids and experts say unchaperoned TV viewing is playing a larger role in shaping character and potentially behavior you know, on TV oftentimes uh, things are solved in 30 or 60 minutes and it's solved with violence that can have a long-term effect on kids ability to solve problems UMD professor Deborah Peterson Perlman has spent hours viewing violent TV programming and years analyzing its effect. I'm not particularly keen on a child being exposed to any level of violence uh, until they're capable of understanding distinctions between fantasy and reality. 
But how do you know when a child is able to make that distinction? This 13-year-old says children her age can easily tell the difference. And you know, it's just a bunch of actors on TV just trying to entertain you. It's not really anything important that you should take into real life. Many experts say most people don't realize the extent of the influence of televised violence, and they say that lack of understanding is contributing to the epidemic of violence among our nation's children. In Duluth, Barbara Riles, Channel 6 News. Well, in an effort to show the impact of television violence on kids, we took our cameras to a daycare center for a first-hand look. Our cameras watched as children viewed first Barney and then Power Rangers, and the differences were very dramatic and telling. We'll take you to that preschool classroom tomorrow so you can see for yourself the effect television can have on children. Now on to other news. A new Indian gaming agreement in Wisconsin may help out poorer tribes like Red Cliff and Bad River. Under a new system, tribes with the most gambling revenue would share money with the least. This revenue sharing plan is part of a new five-year agreement signed by the governor and the Oneida tribe. A Hibbing man's quick thinking and work-sponsored CPR training has saved the life of a young boy. Tonight, Maureen Talrico explains why everyone should know this life-saving procedure. A birthday party at the Kaler Park Hotel turned tragic when nine-year-old Ryan went after a ball in the deep end. See, and my son dove under and spotted Ryan laying on the bottom in the deepest part of the pool and came up and yelled, and the other adult yelled. Well, immediately I ran over, and when I saw him down there, I mean, he looked like a, like a doll at the bottom. Rod dove into the water, fully clothed, pulled Ryan from the pool, and instantly began performing CPR training he had learned as an employee of Abtac Mining. After the third breath, Ryan began to breathe. It was pretty freaky. An ambulance crew checked the boy out. He was shaken up, but fine. His mom was a different story. Yeah, when we got home, it did just sunk in, kind of like, wow, you know, we could have lost him. And it's just very, very scary. Was his Mother's Day a little bit more special? Mm-hmm. How come? Well, because I could have been minus one child. The whole family will learn CPR, and Ryan has learned some important lessons. Keep your life jacket on, stay in the shower, and, and don't chase after balls. Mom has a hard time trying to express thanks to a man who rescued her child. There are no words that... Both families never knew each other very well before Sunday's incident, but now plan to keep in touch. Well, like I told Ryan, I said, later I said, Ryan, we're friends for life. In Hibbing, Maureen Tallarico, Channel 6 News. <laughs> well, now the Killer Park Hotel does offer lifeguards for private parties. Ryan and his twin brother both plan to take swimming lessons this summer. Good idea. So if you'd like to learn CPR training, contact your local American Red Cross. Well, when we come back, George says we could see some showers. His five-day forecast is next. And then a place to get a cup of coffee and food for the mind. Jason Rice is checking it out. Dave and Michelle, they're called Cyber Cafes. And coming up in just a moment, I'll tell you what's new and special about these cafes making their ways into your community. Enjoy the outdoors with patio furniture from Menard. This five-piece table and chair set from Grofelex is durable and easy to care for with an attractive textured tabletop. Just $129. Protect wood surfaces with flood clear wood finish. It penetrates deep to seal out moisture and the harmful effects of the sun. Now, just $12.72 a gallon. Find great savings on great products at Menard. Save big money at Menard. A lot of us have babies of our own. So when a little girl in our community needed special help, our store raised money for the Children's Miracle Network who helped make it possible for Taylor to walk. And she decided to thank us by doing her therapy in our store where her grandfather brought her every day. 
Every year we raise money all over the country for kids like Taylor so we can watch these little miracles grow up all around us because we live here too and we believe good works. The Subway Club Sweepstakes is here. We're giving away $8 million in prizes, food, and coupons. Everybody wins. Subway, the way a sandwich should be. Dateline Tuesday. Jerry Seinfeld talks about the end. I've resigned myself to the fact that everyone will hate it. So what does he really think about saying goodbye? Are you feeling incredible pressure right now to go out with a bang? And what does the rest of the cast think about the final sign-off? Katie Couric's exclusive interviews. Dateline NBC Tuesday. Before NBC's dramatic conclusion of Witness to the Mob, meet a real-life mobster who helped bring down a major crime syndicate. A Dateline exclusive at a special time, 8, 7 central tonight. Then, Witness to the Mob, based on the true story of the mobster who brought down John Gotti. TV Guide calls it compelling. It's absorbing, says People magazine. And Entertainment Weekly hails it a standout. We gotta make them pay. The dramatic conclusion of Witness to the Mob, NBC tonight. Parental discretion advised. Meteorologist George Kessler's forecast can be heard weekday afternoons on KKCB B105 FM and WEBC 560 AM. Toasty day in some parts of the Northland, cool in others. It's that lake, I'll tell you. It makes, it makes your day interesting in the weather department. High 62, that was at the airport, only about 52 downtown, though. Lows of 42, normals of 60 and 38. There are your records. Current temperature down to 57 degrees. The winds are picking up out of the east at 10 miles an hour, trying to propel in that cool lake air. At the same time, some rain is trying to come in from the west. I'm rooting for the rain. I'm not sure it can beat the lake. At this point of the year, that cold water is very powerful. Humidity up to 51%. The pressure is still falling, 29.75. All the ingredients are there if we can just hang on to the landing. Take a look. Numbers across the region, 82 over in Ironwood, 73 degrees. This is down around Gordon, Shirley Gerard's place, 57 in the Twin Ports. I'll tell you what, right now it's 65 degrees in Hermantown, though, at Lauren Coonley, and he's just waiting. He has a lightning detector, says it's starting to buzz a little bit. And going up to the north and west, Shar Godek, she picked up a quarter inch of rain in about 20 minutes in Hibbing. And if that's not enough for you, Jim Schneider up in North Home picked up one gorgeous inch of rainfall this afternoon in a steady downpour. Says it was great. Dave Young, Grand Rapids, also some rain around there. Don Olson in Cohasset, 62 degrees. Again, the rain has been coming down to our west. Now we just have to wait and see if we can pull it across the entire region. At this time, Wisconsin has been entirely missed, as have Lake Cook and eastern parts of St. Louis County. So cross your fingers. To our south, 70s, 80s, and 90s. This is the heat and the humidity which is feeding the system. Meanwhile, some cool air knifing in behind it. It's the age-old combination of the cool and the warm getting us our precipitation. 50s in the east, they've had 12, state, 12 straight days of rain. There's English for you. Along the coast here in New Jersey, New York State, Massachusetts, and Connecticut have been a deluge. That's where all the moisture is. And as long as that system stays there, it's blocking up everything behind it. So the storm we have advancing from our west is the same system that we were talking about on Friday. Still has not gotten out of the area. There's that one in New York State, all of their rain. For us, we have two separate systems, really. One up there north of Lake Winnipeg, then a second one buried back here in Wyoming. Now that this one is beginning to erupt on out, it's going to try and push the moisture and the energy far enough into our region to give us all a drink. At this time, it hasn't succeeded, but I'm an optimist by nature, so I think it might just have the oomph to get in here. It's a slacker of a storm, frankly, but we'll see if we can hold it together long enough to get the rainfall moving in. Here's radar in motion. First batch just crossing Minnesota. This is the one that gave them the inch of rain up in North Home. It's starting to organize Brainerd, St. Cloud. This is the axis of the really heavy rain. It'll move on over Aiken and then just brush the region later on tonight. But we have already a second batch beginning to develop behind it. Looks like this one's taking the western route, but don't despair. There's even a third one beginning to form up now in western South Dakota. So we have a lot of shots at this. So if you miss it tonight, it's not necessarily over with. Here are the speckles. Those are all showers and even some rumbles of thunder moving on through where you have the yellow. Those are the very, very hardest rain showers, but there's more of a movement to the north than to the east. So we'll be watching it throughout the night. Looks like a nice steady rain though, the northern portions of our viewing area. What am I expecting? Half an inch, maybe as much as an inch by the time you get to southwestern Minnesota, but they haven't had any problems. They've already had plenty of rain. Well, by tomorrow, here comes the last batch, the energy at the heart of the storm system. And by Wednesday, it's out of the picture and the sunshine is back. So this is our chance. We need to take it. Forecast for the overnight hours, showers and storms. It will cool off. That rain does knock the temperatures back, mainly in the 40s, although I can't rule out some 50s over in the UP and in certain of the eastern portions of northwestern Wisconsin. 
Then for tomorrow, more showers. They will be scattered, but this is our chance. 53 in the Twin Ports, thanks to the lake. Could be some 60s inland. As we gaze on ahead to Wednesday, warming up, the sun coming out, temperatures nearing 70 degrees. And if we're fortunate, it will be humid. The five-day outlook. Fortunate. Yes. Well, there's no like humidity. Humidity. <laughs> humidity is not a bad thing because it indicates there's at least some moisture around. Exactly. By Friday and Saturday, we have an additional chance of rain as we get some warmer temperatures in here. But again, those will be those hit and miss summer type storms. Mm -hmm. All right, George. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Yep. Well, that cup of joe at a small cafe isn't what it used to be. It's becoming much more. Coffee shops around the country are turning to the Internet to bring new ambiance and more business. And the trend is hitting the Northland. Jason Rice is at one such place in Superior getting a taste of some coffee and the World Wide Web. That's right, Dave and Michelle. I am getting a taste of that gourmet coffee. And I'm at La Petite Espresso House in Delhi in Superior, where, of course, they serve up fine uh, espressos and other coffees, just like you would expect a coffee shop to do. But there's one catch to this place. They've got online service for their customers, and it's an added touch that seems to be popular nationwide right now. Right here at, at La Petite, the customers can have a cup of hot coffee and check out the day's news on Online 6, for example, or they can sit and uh, play a game as we've got uh, a game of Doom going on over here. Either way, it's a popular pastime for many people. Britta Simonson works here, and Britta, what have, what have your customers thought of having online service right here? Well, we've seen a lot of new, fresh faces. People seem to be having a great time. They're checking their email emailing their friends across seas, everything. It's been great. And so has it, uh, has it proved to be an added business attraction? It's definitely a great addition to the cafe, definitely. Uh, all right, thanks a lot. As you can see, the computers are here and ready for use. In fact, I think what I'm going to do is uh, sit down here and check things out myself. Actually, La Petite has their web page up for me right now. You could even uh, just do a little bit of searching. Perhaps I'll go find something about golf. Uh, Maybe not. Dave and Michelle, it's the wave of the future. Coffee, computers, news and information. Back to you. What more could a person ask for? I'm sorry, just don't <laughs> spill a coffee on a computer Ooh, terminal. Bad news, <laughs> right, bad Jason. news. Hmm. Well, Tom Hansen joins us now with a preview in sports. So it was a very good day for a UMD hockey player. Obviously not on the ice today, but he signed a three-year deal. He's turning professional and leaving college early. We'll tell you which player and which team when we come back. And NFL Commissioner Paul Tagliabue talked to the prospective new Vikings owner. Those stories and more when we come back. Call the Channel 6 Weather Center Forecast Hotline at 727-0000. Brought to you by Channel 6. I, I, I guess what I'm trying to say is my life has changed because of you. Because you have... You have given me value. Uh, cool. Did somebody say McDonald's? What do you get when you blend tempting candy or cookie toppings with creamy soft serve ice cream? Presenting McDonald's new McFlurry. It's evening in Lincoln Junction, and the lights are going on. Because two generations ago, your friends and neighbors built an electric co-op. Since then, we've kept the power flowing steadily to you and your growing community. Now, local co-ops are joining other co-ops to form a nationwide alliance. Touchstone Energy. To ensure state-of-the-art technology at an affordable price. It's the power of human connections. We are the Touchstone Energy Partners of Minnesota and Wisconsin. You're watching the Channel 6 6 o'clock news, greater Minnesota's best newscast for an unprecedented fourth year in a row. Closed captioning provided by Schneiderman's. Dodge Caravan not only offers a convenient driver's side sliding door, it's cleverly designed to hold the sliding doors open, even when you're parked on the steepest of hills. Try it out for yourself if you're ever so inclined. Dodge Caravan. Now select Dodge and competitive owners get up to $2,000 cash back on Dodge Caravan. There's only one place where the selection is high and the prices are low. Gotta go to GCO. GCO Carpet Outlet announces total flooring savings. Nothing over $1.99 a square foot for all carpet and vinyl. Carpet prices start at 44 cents a foot. We really save. I say $500. Nothing over $1.99 a square foot for all carpet and vinyl. Only 
only at GCO Carpet Outlet. Gotta go to GCO. We're in Duluth on Highway 53, south of Walmart. NBC Thursday, the night of TV history you've been waiting for. The greatest Seinfeld ever, the final Seinfeld. How will it all end? Even we don't know. <laughs> then, come on, come on. it's the heart-stopping season finale of ER. And stick around for one last goodbye from Jerry on The Tonight Show. It all starts 8, 7 Central, NBC final Seinfeld Thursday. Don't be the only one to miss it. Curtis Dole has played his last game in a UMD hockey uniform. Today, the 21-year-old native of Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, signed on with an NHL team and will forego the remaining two years of college eligibility. Today, the rugged defenseman signed a three-year deal with the Florida Panthers. The 6'1", 220-pound sophomore was fourth on the team in scoring this past year with 32 points. He had nine goals and 23 assists. In his freshman year, he was named to the all-WCHA rookie team. This year had 120 penalty minutes, the second most in the Bulldogs' single season. He is second all-time in that department and is looking forward to his new opportunity. I don't think it's really sunk in yet, actually. It's nerves are going, and I guess it's a relief to have something like this happen to you, and it's exciting. All in all, it's been a great experience. Coaching staff gave me the opportunity. Mike Sertich and Glenn Kulik and Jim Knapp, they gave me the opportunity to play and come here for four years, and I used two of them, and obviously their coaching helped a lot because I learned a lot as a player. And, and I'm sure when you ended the season, you didn't anticipate losing a guy like Curtis. Uh, no, we didn't, but I mean, um, it's great for him, and it's great for our organization to get get Curtis going up there. I mean, he got he got offered the money, and he took it, and it's a great, great opportunity for him, and um, I wish him the best of luck. Football author Tom Clancy met with top NFL officials today to ease concerns that he can raise $200 million to buy the Vikings. A spokesman for NFL Commissioner Paul Tagliabue says Clancy likely will make a presentation to the league's finance committee next week. It's unclear whether the owners will take a formal vote on the proposed sale at that meeting. Clancy's advisor says about 20 investors are involved. He says the group's commitments might total a few million dollars beyond the purchase price. That would give him 30% overall ownership and all of the voting stock. The North Line racing season got started yesterday in Proctor. One change in the modified class is with the suspensions of the car. Al Uton of Superior explains the rule change. Here in the modifieds where they got an open rear suspension in them so we can, uh, um, we can run basically what you bring, you know. So uh, um, there's a lot more things to work with, a lot more adjustments. I think with this, this suspension you can race UMP or NASCAR or uh, IMCA, um, you can race. You can race anywhere. It's for the better. I mean, it's you know, it'll. Uh, it's just going to help us all, you know, learn more about the cars and how they work. And in Proctor last night, they opened their 47th season of racing. The Super Stock winner was Bob Kittner. Modified's Don Cop started the Proctor season with the win, and in late models. Dick Crispin comes out of retirement to win late models. It was the first time Crispin raced in about two years. And in Street Stocks, Scott Lawrence was the feature winner. We'll have more in the Northland racing season tomorrow night and all week long right here on the Channel 6, 6 o'clock news. The Milwaukee Brewers begin a two-game series against St. Louis tonight. Scott Carl scheduled to start. He's 4-0. And at the Metrodome tonight, former Twins pitcher Scott Erickson will start for the Orioles. Bob Tewksbury will start for TK. Duluth was a good place to be for Tiger Woods this weekend. Not Duluth, Minnesota, but Duluth, Georgia. Tiger Woods has his first PGA victory in 10 months. Woods followed Saturday's course record 63 in Duluth, Georgia with an even par 72 yesterday. But that was good enough to hold off Jadon Blake at the Bell South Classic. Woods finished at 17 under par, 271. High school golf with Giants Ridge invite today. Eveleth Gilbert plays first, followed by I Falls and Mora. And in boys, Eveleth Gilbert pulled off the sweep with the win, fall second, and Cloquet's Glenn Hagberg had a hole in one on hole number six. And this just in, Dave and Michelle, Karen Strummy will not be going to Michigan Tech University for basketball. That job went to Kevin Borseth. So Bulldog basketball fans can relax now. We get She's to keep stay. her. Good. She's going to stay. Good. Yep. <laughs> Thanks, Tom. We're going to be right back. Don't go away. It's the grandest of them all. Steak Escape is proud to show you their grand escape. 
Take your choice of 7 or 12 inches of grilled steak, fresh onions, green peppers, mushrooms, and tasty provolone cheese. Top it off with your choice of great toppings. All this on fresh white or wheat bread baked daily right here. And best of all, it's available at a great price. 7 inches for $2.99 and 12 inches for $4.99. Find your grand escape in the Miller Hill Mall. You can also take a bite out of our Hibbing or Cloquet stores. It's Steak Escape. Snapper walk behind mulching mowers. Get the quality you expect for a price you wouldn't. Check out Snapper's new 5 horsepower push mower for under 300 bucks. Or be kind to your lawn and yourself with our self-propelled 6 horsepower mower for under 400 bucks. These durable mowers have powerful engines and 21 inch mowing decks. Hurry to your local Snapper dealer now to get the best for less. Snapper. Anything less just won't cut it. Get your Snapper at Northwestern Small Engine and the shop. Hey, when bad things happen in life, you wish you could reverse them. Because when everything you've worked hard for goes up in flames, you just want things back the way they were. That's why at Farmers Insurance, everything we do is about getting life back to normal again. Isn't that what insurance is supposed to do? Farmers, get you back where you belong. Your farmer's agent in Duluth is Charles Davidson in Cloquet Gordon Lindquist. Announcing new savings from the new Dodge, with up to $1,000 extra cash back on select Dodge cars, trucks, and caravans. That's up to $1,000 in addition to existing incentives, so you can save as much as $2,000. It's our way of thanking loyal Dodge owners and welcoming new ones, because this bonus offer is open to select Ford and GM owners too, but only for a limited time. The Dodge owner's bonus, new savings from the new Dodge. 15 years ago, a big wheel came to town. Hey, that was great. Can I get a deal on a thousand of them? Let's try out the jet skis tomorrow. Wheel of Fortune, bigger cash and prizes. Take a spin. George, how about a final look at the forecast? I have the great joy and pleasure of hauling out the radar first, which I don't get to do very often. My Show radar us. has been in the shop. Here it is. This is the very latest, just hot off the computer. There is a nice batch of rain moving on up through Itasca County, now a little southern corner of Itasca County. It looks like it's heading pretty much for Hibbing, a Buell, Mountain Iron, Eveleth, Gilbert. They are going to be really mopping it up. Get it? A little weather humor there. <laughs> That's okay, George. Uh, for folks who live in Duluth or Superior, now we're really talking about a close call. That bottom little stretch down to the south and east of Brainerd may be enough to just clip, say, Proctor, Cloquet, Hermantown, and if you're lucky, Superior in Duluth, but it's going to be close. But this isn't the only batch. There are a couple others behind this. So we'll have a chance right on through tomorrow. So we'll just call it showers and storms for the Minnesota side tonight, but by tomorrow, I have them for everybody. It'll Great. be hit or miss around that lake, but it's the best chance we've had in a while, so we might as well do the best we can with it. Mm -hmm. So what you're telling me is, is, is it may rain on our softball team tonight. Well, this the only time it's rained since, like, I don't know, January was last week. Yeah, when we whenever the screaming peacocks take the field, the <laughs> rain clouds rain. gather. Yeah, well, there we go. Hey, you won last week. Honor. Must be yeah, all the <laughs> powerful hitting. I don't know. All right, thanks, thanks George. <laughs> thanks for joining us tonight, everyone. Hope to see you back here for our Top Line News at 10. <laughs> Men's wardrobe provided by Mainstream Fashions for Men, located in the heart of downtown Duluth. Jamie's got to stay off her feet. If she leaves that bed, it's your fault. Got it? Uh, my fault. Good. But she's keeping Paul on his toes. <laughs> and some toothpaste. <laughs> there is an invasion coming. I can see endless variety of colors. Three channels of HBO, two channels of Cinemax. The entertainment invasion is here. People, when they come in, are very afraid. They've heard stories uh, of what uh, cancer will do, what the treatments will do. I chose specifically to work with cancer patients and probably will never go anywhere else. It's just a privilege. They teach me how to live. The cancer patients teach me how to live. Here, you'll find some of the best cancer care in the country. And you'll find one more thing. 
hope. We'll get you through this. You won't go through this alone. Announcing new savings from the new Dodge. With up to $1,000 extra cash back on select Dodge cars, trucks, and caravans. That's up to $1,000 in addition to existing incentives. So you could save as much as $2,000. It's our way of thanking loyal Dodge owners and welcoming new ones. Because this bonus offer is open to select Ford and GM owners too. But only for a limited time. The Dodge Owner's Bonus. New savings from the new Dodge. At Black Bear Casino, customer service is our top priority. We know it's those little things that make your visit a pleasant one, so we make it a point to go the extra mile. We pride ourselves in offering the best in casino excitement and feature two terrific dining spots to better serve our customers. Our friendly professional staff is committed to customer satisfaction. You can expect something exciting to be going on every day of the week at Black Bear Casino, and you can count on the red carpet treatment when you get there. Black Bear Casino voted best entertainment spot in the Northland for two years in a row. I'm Stone Phillips. On Dateline Monday, meet a real-life mobster who helped bring down a major crime syndicate. He gave them his allegiance, and then he turned them in. Join me for a Dateline exclusive at a special time, 8, 7 Central, NBC Monday. Hi, I'm LaKenya Scott from Texas Southern University. Hi, I'm Mark Cox from College of the Mainland. Hi, I'm Alicia Clark from Towson University. It's, it's College, college Week on! on.